Like always, if you have a testimony, please feel free to stand. If you have a song you want to sing, please feel free to shout it out. We are here to praise the Lord and lift up the Lord as anything you can contribute and more than happy to take. This morning, we're going to start off with Victory is Mine. How many of you woke up in the victory this morning? Thank you. 
campus glad to be here. Yeah. So many of my friends I grew up with, they're not here anymore. They, they, they're ill or they've uh, on the wrong side of the law or whatever. But the Lord sees fit for me to be here every Sunday as much as I can. And I just want to say I'm grateful for that. There's been so many things, so many adversity that just trying to keep me from being here. But by the grace of God, you
Move anything that causes us not to praise your holy name. Right now, God, spark that fire inside of us that we will praise you to the utmost. And as we praise you, we will receive our blessings. So have your way, Lord. In the matchless name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. And all that love the Lord say, Amen. 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 Good morning, good morning, good morning. We thank God for another day's journey, another opportunity to be and stand on holy ground. If you would not mind to look at the front of your bulletin, you will see our morning congregational song. We'll understand it better by and by. I believe it is 325 in your hip books at this time. Don't have a book.
Can you can you forward that to myself or First Lady that we can put it on our on our uh, Facebook page and get that out to people? And we will endeavor to make some that you can physically hand out to other people. Marvelous job, Vicky. Thank you so much for stepping up and stepping in. And then I also heard from several people that you're uh, conducting the meeting for the missionary team. Uh, when moms. And so again, I thank you for stepping up and doing that. Now, again, let me just take this opportunity, Vicky, would you like to tell us a little bit about the tea that is going to go on so that everybody can get excited like I am? Oh, yeah. Amen? <laughs> um, we are very excited. Um, so when I grew up, we always did the missionary tea, so we're bringing it back. It will be on April 22nd, that's a Saturday, 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. We do have tickets. You can see any missionary for a ticket or if you'd like to donate. We will be playing games, we will have food, we will have vendors, so definitely come out. Um, we will be fellowshipping, okay? So we will be here at the back of our church. So just come ready to give glory to God and enjoy some tea with the missionaries. Amen. <laughs> and again, as well, we will be doing every Sunday. I said this last week, there will be a bake sale, and that is all about moving and contributing to the work that we do in the church. And so, uh, if you're asked to bake a cake, pie, whatever it is, do so, buy it, whatever you're going to do. Uh, as I said last week, then buy it back. <laughs> Amen? Amen? And then share it with somebody. Amen. Amen? That's a good way to fellowship that you do that. And so again, let us be mindful of all of the announcements as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, there is, through the U.S. Census, they are looking for people to assist them. And so there's, it's a long uh, information there, but it, it says that they're looking especially uh, to identify black or African Americans, and they're looking for people to help them uh, it says you may be eligible to earn $75 for participating in this 90-minute focus group. So if you're interested, it will be on the bulletin board uh, in the back. As well, our, the Junior League of Summit has uh, at least uh, two or three um, scholarships, grants that are out there for different and various things. One of the scholarships uh, deals with um, education. And so again, we want to get that to um, our students that are graduating as well. The Leola Stewart Scholarship is available to those that are graduating. Now, I don't think we have anybody, but again, um, I want to make sure that it's out there and that those um, that may know somebody eligible, please do that. As well, the Mount Laurel uh, Subcommittee for Summit will be meeting on February 7th. And Mount Laurel is affordable housing. And so those in the city of Summit uh, that are looking to get, to buy, to do all those things, you need to take part of this uh, meeting that is going on. And again, the information will be on our bulletin board. Those of you that fit into the category, then they will move you into what needs to be done in order to apply through an application to become uh, one of the candidates to get affordable housing. Amen? Amen. Now, God is great and he's worthy to be praised. Y'all didn't say it like a minute. Let me, let me, I'm going I'm to say it and go, go ahead, right? God is great and he's worthy to be praised. But yeah. Miles, yeah. I want you, Miles. Miles, I, I heard some great things about you. I heard, first of all, of your mannerism, that you are a gentleman and a scholar. Then I heard that you tore up somebody's basketball court and you're still trying to get it fixed right now. Now, I always knew that you were a good basketball player, but what more impressed me is that the scholar and the gentleman that they said about you. And so, thank you, Miles, for the representation of a young man in the society. Amen. I am grateful to each and every one of you. Uh, my wife is here today, and so I'm grateful for all of those things that we do, prayers, and all of that. Now, you know, uh, my wife thinks that she can just 
one back and do stuff. So if y'all see him doing something, she goes back and says, no, first lady, let me do it. Okay? Give her at least a couple weeks to get back into the groove. Amen. Her heart, her heart is in the right place because she's always work, willing and working for the Lord. And so again, I try to slow it down a little bit. And uh, so again, if you all right. <laughs> next next week is fifth Sunday, and none other than our own beloved Reverend Rose Dean's gonna be here. Amen. <laughs> so again, come because we know she's gonna come with a word for us, and she's gonna lift up the word that God gives us. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's stand to your feet. I'm not even going to ask you to open your Bibles. Just listen, because you already, you already know these scriptures by heart. It's always fun. And that's okay, lady. We're going to Genesis 1. We're going to lift up two verses, 26 and 27. And then we're going to... Uh, Genesis 2, and lift up verse 7. Y'all already know what they are, right? And God said, let us make man in our image. After our likeness, and let them have dominion over flesh, fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Yeah. Amen? Amen. How many are grateful for what God has done for you? that you haven't done what God wants you to do. Right. Right. This, is, this is what worship is all about. Yes. Worship is coming, healing, humbling yourself before God. That's right. That's right. Not the pastor, not the preacher, not choirs, not officers, not anybody else. When you enter into this place, you're not entering into pilgrim, you're entering into God's house. And so we come to worship him this morning, but we also come to ask for guidance and uh, ask for forgiveness of our sins and transgressions. And so this morning as the choir comes in song, think about all of those things. When you look at the craziness, 10 people are killed for no reason at all. When we look at the craziness that's going on in the world right now, believers of God have got to pray to God in the sincerity that God would move upon each of us, move upon the people as he did. But God said, let that be. God meant it to be good for all of us. And so this morning as Brother Dean comes and leads us in prayer, as she prays openly, Honestly and verbally unto the Lord. You get your prayer in too at the same time. And watch and see what God do on all of us. Come on, boy.
voice. Yeah. So they can lean and depend on you to help 
to overcome their issues. Lord, I know you're able. You got all the power in your hands. You can do anything but fail. So we need you today, Lord. Right there in all avenues of our world. We need you for the homeless. We need you for those who are sick. We need you for those who have mental problems. Help them, Lord. We know you're able. Right now. We know you will. Lord, we'd rather have you than silver and gold. We silver and gold can buy something for us. But you can clean our hearts up. And you can grant us eternal life. And that's what we want in this world. So right now, Lord, I'm just asking you to cover everybody under the sound of my voice. You're under the sound of my voice. I want God to touch you right now. Touch you in a mighty way. And let them know you get this. And you get it all by yourself. And you just want them to lean and depend on you. And we know you can. And we know you will. So Lord, I'm in the name of Jesus, that we just try to have a do-right mind. Beyond this point, we need to start having a do-right mind to praise you, to give you glory, to give you what you so rightfully deserve. Because you are God all by yourself, and you don't need anybody else. So help us, Lord. Okay. You know, I want to thank you right now. Because we know you've done some great things in our lives. I want to thank you right now. For being the God that you are. And Lord, I want to lift up holy hands and say, I know you're going to do something even greater. I know you're going to do something greater. So we're going to watch and wait. And in the meantime, we're going to pray. And in the meantime, we're going to praise your holy name. And we're going to persevere. Because your time is not like our time. And we don't even need to try to get involved in that. We just need to believe that you're able. Believe that you can. Believe that you will. So Lord, I ask you to cover every church in our world. And let them put you in. There are a lot of churches that have taken you out. There are a lot of bishops and all other titles who have taken over the hierarchy status. But you're God. And no one's going to make me down to you. And I know you can do anything but fail. So I'm lifting up this prayer right now. That you cover everybody who needs some coverage. And I match this wonderful name of Jesus the Christ. Amen.
point that when you say you're going to do something. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Amen. Come on, boy. Praise the Lord.
Last week we talked about that righteous seed. And I told you this week we we're going to talk about the back. Listen to these words again. Close your eyes and just listen to the words. God said, let us make man in our image. After our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cow, and over all the earth, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The vow. This word vow in the now form is a solemn promise. In the verb form, solemnly promise to do a specific thing dedicated to someone or something, especially when we deal in a deity. A vow could be positive and include all promises to perform a certain thing for or bring certain offerings to. God in return for certain benefits which are hoped for at his hands. God vowed to make us in his image. It's not just Adam, but every living creature, God vowed to do that. I told you last week that when he breathed into that which would be man, he planted a seed deep inside of us. He planted a seed of righteousness of who he wants us to be. Now, you can, if you choose to, use somebody else as your own one. But I've decided I want to use Jesus as my role one. Sometime ago, Charles Barkley was in a conversation and they were saying to him that, that he was a mentor. And Charles Barkley said, no, I'm not a mentor. Don't put me in that category. I don't want anybody to follow after me. And, and I didn't understand it, but something struck me in the spirit to say, no, I really don't want my children. I don't want anybody to follow after Charles Barkley. Not when we got somebody like Jesus. Y'all hear me this morning? Amen. You see, we get caught up about a lot of things, but we ought to get caught up in Jesus. Amen. You see, if we use Jesus as our role model, Amen. then we'll find ourselves walking in the pathway of righteousness. You, you see, we, we don't worry about when men try to deceive us or hurt us, because Jesus tells us that in the end of all of that, they will try to do all of that, but my Father still got all control, all power. <laughs> God vowed, God vowed that when God created us, you see the words for itself, he gave us dominion over everything. Now, on the human side of me, I, I, I don't know if you should put that in eyes. Yeah. Because when we look around, we're messing up some things. We're, we're messing up some situations. I, I, it, it, it seemed kind of weird and bizarre, but yesterday at the funeral, 
at Cotton's funeral home, and I began to get into conversation with a couple of the directors there, and we were talking about how young men that, that in that particular week that there was a large number of young men dying young and all sorts of situations. And, and I simply said to them that the difference is that men of old would step up and stand up and get younger men, didn't matter whether they was their sons, it didn't matter whether it was their nephews, it, it was the fact that men wanted those around them to grow up and to be men and be able to walk in. All of you, all of us in here know that you did something wrong. I still haven't figured this out, people walking. By the time you got home, there wasn't no papers, wasn't no all cell phones. Your parents knew exactly what you had done. It was almost like a gauntlet going down the street. Everybody knew what had happened, and everybody was on you about what you... Now we, we're, we're looking at one another strangely. We don't say nothing to nobody, but, but the truth of the matter is that, that we have to understand that God has made a vow to us, that he's going to watch over us. He's never going to leave us, nor will he forsake us. You, you see, in the same manner that the vow can be positive, it, it also can be negative and include promises by which people bound themselves to abstain from certain things. You see, my brothers and sisters, when we use Christ as our role model, it, it bounds us in a vow to stay away from sin. Sin can present itself on every side. But it doesn't mean you've got to go into sin. You, you, you see, let me, let, me, let me put it where somebody can get it. it that, that my mother and father said, everybody jumped off that bridge. Somebody know what I'm talking about? You ain't got to jump off that you see, Daniel and the lions did. That's why Daniel was who he was because he said, listen, I'm not going to bow down. You put me in the lion's den. If the lions eat me up, then I don't care because I'm only going to worship one God. I'm only going to give him glory. I'm only going to give him Yeah, yeah, that's right. Things like that is what our church is. When you want to worship the pastor, you want to worship the president of the auxiliary, you want to worship your office. We didn't come in here to worship anybody in here. We came in here to worship God. We came in here to glorify him. We got to be careful about understanding our vows. You see, God, God in the midst of it, uh, God says that he's going to give us control over all of those things, but, but in the same token, we've got to understand that if God gives us those blessings, God wants us to use them towards his glory. Nowhere in the Old Testament do we find the making of vows regarding uh, as a religious duty, but the fulfilling of a vow was considered a sacred and binding do. You see, if you vow to pilgrim, then as soon as they change the sign out there, your vow is no longer good. Y'all ain't hear me. You, you vow to the job, and you walk in one morning, and they got that bright pink. Uh, now they're going to do that. They just send an email and say, don't come back anymore. You got family, you got friends, and if you vow to them, and, and all of a sudden you realize when you need them, you can't. But how many know when you call on his name, he showed up in your life? How many know that when everybody else left you alone, God's promised you that I wipe the tears from your eyes, I, I walk with you, I talk with you, I'll be right there for everything you're going on. Yeah, so vow was binding as an oath, and therefore to be kept to the letter, and it is 
not to be lightly made to God or to anyone else. You see, if you say you're going to do something, do it to the best of your ability. Do it so that in the midst of it, that you hold up your promise that you said to somebody. A thousand are voluntary promises which are when once made were to be kept. Uh, even in the midst of no matter what went on in your life. Shot by me, shot in a minute. They wanted them to bow to the king. They said, no, no. You ain't bought us from where he bought us from. You haven't done what he's done for us. So you put me in the fire. You put me in the fire. Now, some of us have been in the fire. Amen. Have I got a witness? Amen. And when all else failed, he showed up with you in the fire. You see, when we deal with these things, these, these, these proverbs that are in the Bible are not just to be read, but they're for us to understand that God's vow, the, the Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of I will fear for thy rod and thy staff day. The fact we get caught up with everything else except for what God says. Listen, a little background information is helpful to understand Jesus' words when it comes to vows. The, the religious leaders of the day advocated keeping a vow if it was a public vow using God's name. However, if the vow was made in the course of everyday conversation, a representing only heaven or, or earth or Jerusalem, it was not really binding. You know, how many people you said, well, you know, you told me you was going, oh man, I was just joking with you. I, I didn't have any intention of doing that. You see, that's what messes people up. If you say you're going to do something, that's right, that's right. do it. Amen. And if you can't do it, be a man or a woman enough to go back to them and say, what I thought I could do, I can't do. You see, honesty is the best policy. It helps us through situation. It helps us to overcome. And you see, people uh, like to use loopholes when they deal with things that they promised you. They, they like to go back and say, well, you know, I didn't think this and I didn't think that. And, well, listen, sometimes honesty is the best policy to deal with that. I'm, I'm almost done. All right, Pastor. People could lie to you. They can exaggerate in their conversation and leave themselves uh, an air of credibility by saying, I swore by heaven that it would be true. First of all, it tells us not to swear. If your word is your word, then give your word and follow your word. They could not be held to the account because they did not specifically swear by God's name and the vow was private. Jesus counted the idea, if you swear something, it had better be true. He says, in fact, all you need to say is yes or no. Your word should be uh, your word. It should be true to whatever you say. It ought to be good in season and out of season. That there's no need for overwrought expressions to blister your case. Sometimes we get a little bold in ourselves. And we act in a way that is unbecoming of who God wants us to be. Well, God makes a vow in the highest form that a vow could ever be made. I told you that God did not do it with the plants and the animals last week. Nowhere in the Bible will you find that he blew his breath into the animals or into the fish or into the fowl of the air. Nowhere will you find it in the Bible that he took and did that with the plants. All God did was just speak and they came into existence. But, but it's something about you, something about me, something all the way from uh, uh, Adam all the way now to this generation that God does something because God made a vow that he would make us in his image. And my brothers and my sisters, we got to start walking in his image. Uh, not on 
church up on Sunday, but, but every day we ought to be walking and we ought to be talking. We ought to be living to his glory. Note all the other things he just made them and marked them into existence. But, but with man, he vowed to make him in his own image. Well, well. I gotta say that one more time. He vowed to, to make you and me into his own image. And when God vowed to make us in his image, he vowed to watch over us and to take care of us. He vowed that when you're hungry, I'll give you food to eat. When you're naked, I'll clothe you. When you're out in the, the cold, I'll shelter you. He promised that if mother or father would forsake you. I will pick you up. He said that when your friends leave you alone, I, I'll be a friend closer than any other friend. That, that he made us in his image. Look at what he says and look at what he does. You see, sometimes we say things but we never do it. But God is one that when he says it, he does it. It, it is that in verse 26, God says it and describes the vow of a likeness and the dominion that he's going to give us. Uh, God in his word and manner carries in his vow into the action. With everything that God does, he does it in an action. That God promises that in the midst of it, that he would give us a savior. He promised that he would never leave us alone. He promised that he would fight our battles for us, that in the midst of it, God, when he says it, God follows through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, we got to be a church that follows through with what he says. We've got to feed the hungry. We've got to hold the hungry. We've got to visit the sick. We've got to visit those who just we got to tell a dying word to the up of Jesus. Yeah. Genesis 2 and 7. That is action that he talks about in the first chapter, now his action becomes expressed. God could have spoke man into a living soul, but it would not have been the vow that he said. It would not have been the same if he just spoke us into existence. But, but God does something that he doesn't do anywhere else. God speaks it, and then he takes an action on it. Early this morning, he spoke that you ought to get up, and he made sure that breath of life was inside of you. God, when he speaks to you, you ought to hear him, and you ought to follow him. Yes, it is that the vow was made uh, to make us in his likeness, and the likeness needed to be on the inside and not the outside. Yeah, I told you, I told you. Yes, all of the good looks. All of your good hair. All of your teeth you got. Your nails, eyebrows, whatever it is, all of that's going to fail. Somebody knows what I'm talking about? But that inner thing inside of you. That, that, that righteous seed yes. inside of you. Can, can somebody say God never fails? <laughs> but because if God never fails, then what's inside of me never fails. I hold on to his unchanging hand. I, I can trust that no matter what comes my way, God's going to be drunk and with me. Yes, it is the frame that he uses dust to make. The strength of the vow is in God's action. That, that it is taken because the action is what makes the action come to life. Yes? You lay down last night, slumbered, and slept. Somebody, if not everybody, left the TV on. The TV was watching you while you were slumbering and sleeping. But, but the truth of it is, this match angels early this morning. Woke you up in the right now. Blood, blood and water. And it is the God God who give you another day. He give you another chance. Uh, this is, I wish I had help. This is the day that God yes. It's a little bit different when you realize that tomorrow's not promised. That this is the day. I will worship. I 
it causes eternal life. The vow is everlasting to everlasting. It never grows weak and it never grows dumb. It will keep you in perfect peace. It is a mind regulator and it is a heart fixer. The vow will never leave you alone. The vow is a storm breaker and a company keeper. The vow is everything you need now and you'll need in your future. It's the same vow of yesterday. It's the same vow today. And if you're bold enough, it's going to be the same vow tomorrow. It's the same vow that he gave Abraham. It's the same vow that he gave Moses. It's the same vow that he gave Isaac and Jacob. It's the same vow that he told me.
peace. Things don't look good. Just look at his back. He got us while we were alive. And we pray he'll have us willing we'll back. And the truth is, he will have us. It's just where he sends us to. Heaven and hell are true. Amen? If there are any visitors here this morning, we, we offer you to stand and tell us who you are at the church home. If not, you don't have a church home, we ask that you would consider changing and thinking of this as your church home. Are there any visitors here this morning? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Are we some of my sister here? Amen. Through your 
the word of the Son, he promised that he was preparing a place for us. That when he comes, he's coming back for his church without spot or wrinkle. Yes, yes. Make us peacemakers. Make us able to cause peace to come not only outside, but in our own inner being. Yes, wow. That we feel comfortable to be able to talk to one another without causing anger to come about. God, we ask that I will continue to move and bless this place of Zion. Bless every place opened up in your name right now. That those that are standing would speak your word. That it would touch the hearts of men, women, boys, and girls. And those that would come yielding would come yielding, seeking your salvation. Now God, we thank you for being on holy ground one more time. We thank you for allowing us to honor your glory, your honor, your peace, lifting you up with hallelujahs and thanksgiving. Now God, go with us as we depart from this place. Never, ever depart from us, but strengthen us in everything we do and how we do it. To your glory and to your honor. Now unto him that can hold us, walk us before the everlasting go. There is no